If you've got modest old hardware in your gaming PC and you're literally shaking at the thought of new game requirements in 2023, don't be. Because I've made this video to show you, you can play some old yet pretty cool games on some pretty, well, modest hardware, let's say that. And I think people get quite a bit lost these days. They have to get the new GPU or the new CPU without realizing that the old hardware is probably still perfectly fine especially in the games that they play. I'm partially this type of person because I mainly play older games, yet I've got an RTX 3080. So I'm that person, but I want to show you that you can still play some pretty good games, even though you've got hardware, which is not particularly powerful. So what are the specs of your gaming PC? Let me know in the comments down below. So this is the PC that I'm going to be using for today's testing and let's be honest it's not really that much of a looker like it's very janky. It's built on a GPU box, let's be honest it's not beautiful. However at its heart is the Intel Core i7-2600. This is a Sandy Bridge i7 which launched in 2011 I think it was now so this thing is almost 13 years old so is a very old CPU and it's certainly one I don't recommend in 2023. That's because you can get a Haswell Xeon or a Haswell i7 which will cost around the same amount of money and that's because it's a much better performer than this i7 and it also has support for AVX2 whereas this i7 doesn't. Speaking of unsupported hardware there is this R9 380 and this is a very old graphics card from AMD it launched in 2015 it's only got two gigabytes of video memory as well, which is about standard of what a GPU would have had around back in 2015. So I think this is a pretty representative GPU of what someone would have in the machine back then. And yeah, that's all there is to the R9 380 actually. For memory, we've got eight gigabytes of DDR3 running in dual channel, which was pretty standard back then as well. Eight gigabytes was sort of the sweet spot for memory back then. And all of this is built on a very basic Asus ITX motherboard. It doesn't even have USB 3.0. That's how basic this thing is. And now taking a look at storage, for booting we've got a 256 gig SSD, which is probably more than what someone would have had back in 2015. And we've also got a 500 gigabyte hard drive, albeit this one is a laptop one. But this was a very standard setup back then as many people would have an SSD for some games and their operating system. And then the bulk of their games would be stored on a hard drive. This way their system would be nice and snappy, yet you'd still get the bulk storage of a hard drive because SSDs were not cheap back then. So the aim of today's video is to try and play some games on this PC here while trying to achieve 60 FPS at 1080p. So do you think it can be done? Let's find out. Kicking off the game today is the infamous GTA 5. And after the recent announcement of GTA 6, I think quite a lot of gamers are going to be going back and playing GTA 5. That's why it's the first game I've tested today and good news because it actually runs pretty decent on this machine. Today we got away with the high settings even though it was above the 2GB of VRAM which is on the R9 380. Performance wasn't too bad either, getting 57 FPS on average with a 1% low of 38 frames per second. GTA 5 actually looked pretty good as well even though there was no MSAA at 1080p, I think GTA 5's actually aged incredibly well. This game is 10 years old now even though the PC port is eight years old. However, I think GTA 5 has aged very well. Also, if you want to play custom servers like 5M, this hardware setup is totally fine for that, even though I'd probably recommend a GPU with a bit more VRAM. A game that I've gotten into recently is Skyrim. So today I decided to test the 2016 Special Edition. This isn't the original 2011 launch, as the special edition is quite a bit harder to run but it does look quite a bit better as well. Here I set it to the high preset and it got away with 60 FPS on average with 58 FPS for the 1% low. Creation engine games do have an engine limit of 60 FPS or the physics would just go all haywire if you get anything above 60 frames per second but either way on the high preset 60 fps is totally fine performance in my book and it's probably similar to what you'd get on an xbox well series s with the x and s 
enhancements. And just because it runs Skyrim Special Edition just fine, you'll be fine with games like Fallout 4 and maybe even Fallout 76 as well. The next game up is Rainbow Six Siege and this is my sort of test to see how well an esports game does perform and to be fair, not too bad in my opinion. Setting it to the medium preset and our low end PC today got 115 FPS on average with a 1% low of 77 FPS. This is really decent performance in my opinion, not quite a 144Hz experience but say if you've got a cheap 1080p 60Hz TV lying around and you've got a old HP machine, just put a graphics card into it and it's going to be running quite well in esports games like Rainbow Six Siege. And because it runs Rainbow Six Siege just fine, I suspect if you wanted to play games like Rocket League, Counter Strike 2 and Valorant and them sorts of games, performance in them would be totally fine on a machine similar to this. Next up is Dirt Rally 2.0 and here I usually test F123 as my sort of Codemasters racing game but the R9 380 is too old for F123 and the drivers are too out of date so Dirt Rally 2.0 will have to do for today. Even so setting it to the medium preset and this PC fared quite well getting 84 FPS on average with a 1% low of 63 FPS in the Dirtfish Rally area, which is sort of the open free roam sort of map, I guess. But the performance there was not too bad on the medium preset at all. Dirt Rally 2.0 doesn't look too bad on the medium preset and the performance is not too bad either. Last game up today is Halo Master Chief Collection and more specifically Halo Reach. I think this is one of the more popular games on Halo Master Chief Collection and it's a personal favorite of mine as well. I've done this as sort of another competitive first person shooter test and to be fair, on the original preset performance was pretty good as well. Getting 104 FPS on average with a 1% low of 69 FPS, nice. Also you get more frames per second than the Xbox One version of the Halo Master Chief Collection as well as that is locked to 60 FPS so that's one thing to be known right there and obviously PC does have its other list of benefits too. So overall then the games tested today I don't think anything actually performed too badly. Maybe GTA 5 as that's the only game that got below 60 FPS today but I suspect if you have a slightly more powerful GPU with a bit more VRAM performance in GTA 5 would be totally fine. I know I've only tested five different games today but it does start to paint a picture of what sort of games that this PC might be able to play. Because it ran Rainbow Six Siege and Halo Master Chief Collection just fine at 1080p getting way above 60 FPS, I suspect you'll be fine playing esports games like Counter Strike 2, Valorant and Rocket League. These games should be running totally fine on this machine. Also if you wanted to play popular games like League of Legends and Dota 2, they will run fine on a machine like this too. The only thing that won't run on this machine is Fortnite. That is because the R9 380 just doesn't like playing Fortnite for some reason. It will just cause a massive crash whenever you'd start Fortnite. I found this in a previous video which you can watch up here. So other than Fortnite though, for most of the esports games, you're basically covered. Also because this PC performed quite well playing GTA 5 and Skyrim Special Edition, I suspect all the AAA games will run totally fine on this machine. Games like Fallout 4, which is quite popular on PC thanks to its modding scene, games like that will run just fine. Also thanks to the 8 threads of the i7, you could probably get down to a bit of productivity work on this. Maybe change out the 8GB of RAM for 16GB and you might have a bit of a decent productivity machine on your hands right there. Also my brother used to play on this setup quite a bit as well before I upgraded his machine which you can watch up here. But this machine played Minecraft as well just fine on this i7 so that is something to be known. However it is not all sunshine and rainbows. An older PC like this might run into a few issues. The biggest issue that I was running into was just random black screens for some reason so I suspect there's either something seriously wrong with this R9 380 or maybe just something with older AMD driver packages. I'm not quite sure what was going on. I was supposed to test the 2016 Doom in this video, but half the time when I launched it up, it was just a black screen and yeah, I'm not sure what was going on there. It's definitely something down to the graphics drivers or the graphics card itself. So that's a bit of a shame, but this can happen with all the hardware. Another big problem on this setup was the two gigabytes of VRAM on the R9 380. 
Back in 2015, it was probably just enough, but in 2016, with GPUs like the GTX 1070 launching with eight gigabytes of VRAM, and even GPUs like the GTX 1060 with six gigabytes of VRAM, two gigabytes was starting to look quite a bit anemic back then. And it's because of this, we had to lower some texture settings in games like GTA 5, where I would usually just max out the textures, but the two gigabytes of VRAM at 1080p just, yeah, it wasn't really enough sort of 2016 or 2017 onwards. The final issue that I encountered with this PC was trying to get the screen capture for the gameplay, and I think this might tie into the VRAM. That is because in games like GTA 5, where the VRAM was already basically fully being used, getting the screen capture was next to impossible. This is because after sort of 30 seconds, it would just crash the GPU driver probably because there wasn't enough VRAM and the driver just didn't know what to do with all of that data. So I suspect this is down to a VRAM limitation because every other screen capture worked totally fine. This is my recommendation on a PC build like this. Don't get something with an obsolete graphics card like the R9 380. This is what I would recommend instead. Go out and buy maybe an old HP workstation, which I've made a video on by the way, and put a graphics card in there like an RX 580 or even RX 570. This is because these graphics cards are still supported by AMD somewhat, which you can watch in a video right up here. But they're a lot more supported than something like the R9 380 and they're going to have at least two extra gigabytes of VRAM with some RX 570s and 580s having eight gigabytes of VRAM, so that's an extra six gigabytes. So you won't be running into any VRAM issues like I did today. So can you really game on an older system like this? Of course you can, but you probably already knew that. There are some things that I would have changed with today's setup, so I would have definitely changed out that graphics card. It's not a particularly great one in 2023. I don't recommend it at all. Get a Polaris card instead. Also on the CPU side, I'd recommend something a bit newer, something that is at least Haswell based. That is because in terms of single core performance, Haswell's not actually too bad. By modern standards, it does lag behind quite a bit, but it's way better than Sandy Bridge and that is the point I'm trying to make. Also, it has AVX2 support where Sandy Bridge does not. So do I recommend the PC that I built in today's video and that will have to be a massive no. It was sort of just a replica of what someone would have had back in 2015. But the fact is you can still have fun and play some pretty cool games, albeit a bit older ones, on a system like this. So if you enjoyed this video, there are two other videos right up here, which might be right up your alley. And if you got this far into the video, I would like to say thank you for sticking around this long and maybe even leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed the content. With this being said, I'll catch you in the next one and have a good day.